bam, bam. Bam! Math dictionary. How about that? This is a mathematics dictionary filled up with mathematical terms. It's the multilingual edition, so it's actually got something in the back just filled with like a, a multilingual index, which is pretty cool. Edited by Glenn James and Robert C. James. So here on the spine of the book, uh, it says James and James, which is pretty cool. Uh, on the back of the book, you can see I've got the dust cover here. It's it's in slightly rough shape, but it's uh, it's okay. It's still all together in one piece. Um, just have it looks like some other some other dictionaries by the same publisher, the D Van Nordstrand Company. You've got what do they have here? Scientific Encyclopedia. I like that they have the uh, the page counts too. Kind of looks like I'm looking at the statistics of a boxer or something. Eighteen hundred pages. Dictionary of Physics and Electronics, 1,300 pages. An International Dictionary of Applied Mathematics, 1,200 pages. Um, a second edition of, I guess, this Mathematics Dictionary, 546 pages. Maybe that's just this book. That's probably what it is. 546 pages. How many pages do we have in this guy? Looks like 546, yeah. So this is probably the second edition, I'm guessing. Let's see when this dictionary came out, when it was published originally. Uh, let's see, somewhere in here. I like this uh, this front layout here, it's pretty cool. Uh, interesting sans serif font that they've chosen here. I feel like it's a pretty modern, modern looking font. Um, got some addresses, copyright 1949 is the first date on there. Um, so that must be when it was originally published. Um, actually, no, it says first published April 1959, and then it was reprinted in 1960, 63, 64, and 66, so I'm guessing this one was printed in 1966. That's pretty cool. So this is like 60 years ago this dictionary was printed. Let me tell you a quick story about how I got this dictionary. It really is the part of the beginning of my math book collection, I would say. I certainly owned math books before this mathematics dictionary, um, but it was a man who used to be a professor at the college I studied at who gave me a scholarship, and at some point he also was emptying out his office and gave me like all of the math books that he had in there. So I just got this this influx of math books to my own personal library, and I think it was around then that I really started um, kind of getting a kick out of collecting math books. One of my other professors saw me carting off, um, you know, a handful of math books and asked me to to enjoy never never reading them. But I don't think he understood um, just how into math books I would become because I certainly have read uh, a whole lot of math books. So that's where I got this math book. Um, that uh, that man who gave me the scholarship passed away last year. Um, quick story about him. He spent a year teaching at General Electric, not teaching, sorry, working at General Electric in New York, and uh, he would regularly make the calculating machines there fail by entering numbers too quickly, which is pretty funny. So what's the point of this mathematics dictionary? Well, it says it's designed as a time-saving reference work for scientists, engineers, etc. It will also enable the general reader to understand a particular mathematical concept or to extend his own knowledge. Fair enough. Much like an encyclopedia, I think it kind of feels like. Um, although that's not what it's trying to be, but it, it kind of feels like that sometimes. The coverage of terms is broad, so it goes from elementary terms and arithmetic through calculus, basic terms and differential geometry, right? And, and it goes on and on. Many new basic terms have been included from among the fields of modern algebra, number theory, topology, vector spaces, game theory, linear and dynamic programming. That's very cool. I like how modern algebra, you know, it's got all these different names. Modern algebra, university algebra, which of course is very different from college algebra. It's also called abstract algebra. I like abstract algebra probably as, as its name the best because I feel like that is uh, perhaps the most descriptive. We also get a mention here about the multilingual index in Russian, German, French, and Spanish. So you can quickly find the English meaning of a term in another language, and then you can go to its definition in the body of the book. You've also got a bunch of tables and stuff in the back of the book as well. We'll look at those. Let's just take a flip through some of the, the main pages here, though. In the preface, it makes some mention of how this book compares to an encyclopedia. 
Although this is by no means a mere word dictionary, neither is it an encyclopedia. It is rather a correlated condensation of mathematical concepts designed for time-saving reference work, right? You got a book here, stuff full of terms. You can just reference the book. You don't have to try to find a term in a particular textbook on a topic that might have that term, right? Man, I'm getting really sick of talking with my congested voice. I cannot wait to not be sick. Nevertheless, the general reader can come to an understanding of concepts in which he has not been schooled by looking up the unfamiliar terms in the definition at hand and following this procedure down to familiar concepts, much in the way you would use an encyclopedia. The first page is filled with mostly uh, Abel's, Abel's stuff, Abel's identity, inequality, Abel's theorem on power series, but the very first thing is an abacus, which is cool. It gives you a diagram, tells you about the uses of an abacus. That's pretty neat. And where do we have on the next page? We have abscissa. I'm not sure how that's supposed to be pronounced. I'm saying abscissa, um, which is the horizontal coordinate in a two-dimensional system of rectangular coordinates, usually denoted by X. I point that one out because I saw that in a previous book I reviewed on algebra, and I had not seen the word before then. So yeah, I mean, this works like a standard dictionary. You know, go to the letter you, you're, you're looking for and, and find your term. Um, it's got quite a few figures, too. Let's say we want to look up the definition of a field, we could go to F, D, H. Where's my Fs? Ooh, geodesic. I just saw geodesic. I, I mispronounced that as geodisc. When I started making graph theory lessons, I kept calling it a geodisc. That's what I thought the word was. Somehow I just like miss seen it. I, I perceive the word as geodisc and I just mispronounced it all the time. Um, trying to correct that now. What were you looking for? Fields. There's D, determinant. Got determinants here. Descartes, difference, differentiation, E, epsilon. What does it say about epsilon? I'm curious about that. Epsilon. The fifth letter of the Greek alphabet. Very nice. Epsilon chain, epsilon symbols, and that's all it says there. Okay, F, field. Definition of field. Man, this is taking me a while. Haven't looked through a dictionary in... Well, that's not true. I actually look at dictionaries more than you might think. Um, <laughs> but uh, it can still be tough to, to flip through to find exactly what you're looking for. Um, field. Next page. Field. Field. There we go. There is field, a set for which two operations called addition and multiplication are defined and have the properties, uh, etc., etc. Then you've got some more specific types of fields. Field of study, a group of subjects that deal with closely related material. Uh, pure mathematics or the field of applied mathematics, a field plan, which is a statistics term, a number field, a joining ordered field. Cool. Obviously, I'm a big graph guy. We've got the definition of graph here, um, a drawing which shows the relation between certain sets of numbers, um, a representation of some quantity by geometric object. I'm looking for vertex and edges, a drawing which depicts a functional relation. Uh, blah de blah de blah equation in three variables, bar graph, um, broken line graph, circular graph, graph, graphical, graph, many other schemes, statistical graphing. Does it not have like just like like vertice nodes and lines graph? I don't think it does. I could just be missing it, but I don't see a, like, you know, a graph theory graph. So that makes me curious. What does it say about trees? If we go to the T section, does it say anything about trees, which are uh, connected graphs with no cycles? Tree, triangular, transformation, transportation, tree, 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 transversality, trapezoid rule, triangle. No trees, huh? So I guess there's no graph theory content in here. Interesting. Now, I know that graph theory is a fairly modern field of math. I just looked it up. It turns out the first graph theory textbook was actually published in 1936 um, by Dene Koenig. I don't, I don't know how to pronounce his name. Um, but uh, 1936. So, you know, that's like 30 years before this book was published. Um, so... I don't know. I'm surprised it doesn't have any graph stuff. Oh, well, we're here at the T's. What does it say about a trapezoid? A quadrilateral which has two parallel sides, 
Ah, uh, yeah. It is sometimes required that the other sides be non-parallel. That, that's what I was interested in, if it specified that. Um, the parallel sides are the bases, blah de blah de blah Yeah, regarding a trapezoid and, like, should the, you know, I think it's an interesting discussion. Should the, should the sides that are not required to be parallel, should they be required to be non-parallel? Making, um, a trap, making a trapezoid, like, potentially a parallelogram? right? If, if these two things were parallel, then it would be a parallelogram. So should a parallelogram be a special type of trapezoid? I don't know. I, I think I used to believe that the, the non-parallel sides should, should not be required to be non-parallel so that a parallelogram would be a special type of trapezoid. But the more I think about it, the more I feel like maybe that's the wrong opinion. Maybe trapezoid would be a more useful term if we required that these be um, non-parallel and maybe that would be just easier to discuss but whatever you have to be careful you have to be aware when you're using the word trapezoid um, yeah but tons of tons of good stuff in here I mean you could just flip to any random page and and learn some cool new math maybe it's an outdated term or maybe it's a still in use term that you've just never heard before um, and lots of pictures too stereographic projection of a sphere on a plane I mean a lot of cool stuff Let's go to the back before we wrap up here. You can see all the cool tables they have in the back um, here in the appendices. What's the last word, just out of curiosity? Zorn. Uh, I probably could have guessed that if you gave me some time. Zorn's lemma. Um, factorial zero, defined as equal to unity. Cool. Um, yeah, so you got appendices with common log values, which is neat. Um, more common log values, quite a few. I'd hate to be the guy who has to calculate these back in the day. Seems like pretty dull work, but, you know, I guess if you like doing math, but aren't, aren't that good at it, then it's a job. Trigonometric functions and their logarithms. Okay, that's cool. More trig functions and their logarithms. Sine, tangent, cotangent, cosine. Um, then we've got present value of one dollar oh yeah there's a lot of like financial math stuff in here too um annuities and uh that sort of thing you've got even like a mortality table here american experience table of mortality um oh yeah this i worked as an actuary for a couple of years and this is bringing back memories um i'm kind of too into pure math over applied math so um, as I continued to like study my actuarial exams, I just got a little too bored with it. Um, but there's a lot of cool math going on, and uh, this is one of the things you would look at. You got a table of squares and cubes and roots. That's pretty neat. And that's the end of the tables. Oh, no, there's also a table of, yeah, integrals, differentiation formulas, table of integrals. Um, look at that. Oh, that's just awesome. So many integrals they've got here goes on and on. Um, there's a few pages in the textbook that I teach my AP calculus class out of, um, and it just says a very brief table of integrals, and like it is very brief, especially compared to this, but to somebody who's, you know, just starting calculus and just learning about integrals, the textbook that I'm talking about that, that has like three pages of integrals, it doesn't look or feel very brief to the student who's seeing it to the first for the first time. So I think it's funny that it specifically says, this is very brief. Here's a very brief table of integrals. <laughs> oh, you've even got a Greek alphabet here. Man, this book is just stuffed with so much useful information. Um, I don't know all my Greek letters. I probably should. Theta, iota, kappa, lambda, mu, nu, chi. No, that's not chi. That's, that's z or something. Chi is over here, right? Where's Chi? I don't even see Chi. My vision's a little blurry right now. Oh, there's Chi. Yeah, I just haven't seen it spelled out in a while. C-H-I. There's Chi. And then you also have, now this is really neat, you know, this is a whole index of mathematical symbols uh, broken down by subject, because of course context matters. Um, uh, arithmetic, algebra, number theory, and then calculus and analysis. I mean, this is really neat. This could be, I mean, this would be so useful in a pre-internet age. Even now, I think this could be useful because some stuff is just not easy to Google. You know, like if you don't know what a symbol is, how do you Google it? It, it can be quite difficult.
one pro tip I would use to like figure out symbols I'm not familiar with is go on this site. I can't remember what it's called, but it's like a LaTeX site or, or LaTeX, depending on how you pronounce it. Um, and, and what it does is you can use your mouse to draw a symbol in a little square box and it will tell you the uh, LaTeX code um, to create that symbol. And usually w what you need to create the symbol in LaTeX is a... Um, is is the name of the symbol and you know there might be some specificity with the upper caps and, and the lowercase um, but usually you get the name of the symbol out of that so i would use that sometimes then you got your multilingual index you got french to english um that goes on it, it said it has spanish too and i think it said it had german also so pretty neat i mean there's so much stuff in here pretty big useful reference. Typically if I make a math lesson, especially introducing a concept, if it's like an introduction type of video, um, I always look through my various textbooks to see what potential differences there are between different textbooks definitions. Um, for some reason I've never really looked at this math dictionary um, during that process. I should probably start um, because it can just be useful to get a handle on some of the different ways terms might be defined by different authors. Uh, but anyways, this is my mathematics dictionary. I hope you enjoyed looking at it with me. To me, it's one of the cooler things in my math book collection. I'd like to get some, maybe some other math dictionaries and just see some of the differences, but cool little book. Um, I think it could even be useful now, you know, if you can find a math dictionary for cheap, it's it's cool, and I could definitely see it being useful, as well as just being fun to flip through, you know, it's just fun to flip to a random page and, and see some cool stuff that maybe you haven't, haven't heard of before, so I like it, nice book. Mm -hmm.